This film is about one of Britain's fast disappearing but most enchanting woodland animals, the red squirrel. It tells why they're disappearing from Britain, how they live, where we can still see them, and what we can do to save the remaining populations. This film was shot on the Isle of Wight, a very important place for red squirrel conservation. The red squirrel is unique to this island. It's, as far as we know, been here for the last 7,000 years since the island was uh, separated from the mainland. It's not going to be uh, blotted out or annihilated by the grey squirrel, as has happened in other places. We've therefore got to look after it as best we possibly can. And the way to do this is by looking after our woodlands sensibly, and more importantly, getting the message over to your friends and relations that we must look after these squirrels and preserve them for the next 7,000 years, if possible, and thereafter. For some of us, woods are seen as a peaceful recreational area. But to many creatures, woods are home. We may find evidence of their presence. Some are nocturnal, so we rarely have the chance to see them. If we are lucky, we may see a fleeting glimpse. Squirrels are particularly hard to spot. To the majority of people in the United Kingdom, squirrels mean the American grey squirrel. Since the mid-1800s, when grey squirrels were introduced into Britain, our native red squirrel has gradually been replaced by their grey cousins in all but a few places. As you can see from the map, Scotland still has a strong population in areas where there are pine plantations. Pine plantations are still a red squirrel stronghold. It is thought that red squirrels evolved in coniferous woodland and it is here that they find it easier to withstand the greys. And the two species can even coexist in this habitat. Researchers have found a number of possible reasons for the red's decline and the grey's expansion, such as size, personality and feeding habits. The greys are nearly twice the size of our native reds and a more aggressive and bolder animal altogether. But the two species do not actually fight. The reasons for the red's decline are more subtle than that. Dominance and the right for territory is often won by the bigger and more aggressive animals without coming to blows, whether they're grey or red. Grey squirrels will often eat the hazel crop before it is ripe, leaving little for the reds who rely on hazelnuts to see them through the winter. Grey squirrels have the ability to digest acorns, but reds don't. Therefore, this gives the greys a strong advantage in this battle for our English woodland where oaks are common.
It's usually easy for the grey squirrels to outcompete the reds in this habitat, unless there is a natural barrier to prevent grey invasion. One remaining stronghold, which is an important conservation area for the red squirrel, is the Isle of Wight. The Solent, so far, has proved an effective barrier against grey invasion because there is no fixed link to the island. Taking a ferry is the best way across, as the odd grey squirrel has found in the past. But island territory is jealously guarded for our reds, and grey invaders are sent back on the next boat. Captive breeding and reintroduction programs for red squirrels are proving difficult. Being highly sensitive, they are easily stressed, sometimes with fatal results. Yeah, I've been uh, keeping red squirrels now for sort of 30 years plus, and when I started, uh, they were disappearing rapidly from the south of England, and I thought it's going to be very easy to breed them. I imagined them abounding in the local woods, but first of all, I found it was very difficult to breed them successfully in captivity uh, but over the years I gradually got better at it and now we've got a, a reasonable captive breeding group but as for releasing them if you just release them into grey squirrel areas which is the main part of this of the mainland of course they just wouldn't survive but certainly it's not easy to breed squirrels in the first place and having done so we have to think very carefully about where we might release them and it has to be done through a scheme that's directed by English Nature and uh, other bodies like the Forestry Commission. Right, yes, this is Erica. She's uh, an orphan squirrel that's been brought up by hand, but she's, she's quite a good case in point because uh, unfortunately I've had a few brown rat problems in the last couple of seasons and uh, they've actually attacked the squirrels and um, because she's particularly tame, she would go up to any, you know, a cat or dog, or in this case a brown rat, and uh, she'd bitten on the eye, and the eye got infected. Unfortunately, the local wildlife hospital at uh, East Winch uh, removed the eye, and um, she survived successfully, but a little bit worse for wear. I can understand now why you said it was difficult to rear red squirrels in captivity and release them into the wild. So it's especially important that safe havens like the island are protected. Our red squirrels have particular appeal. They're generally lighter in colour than the continental red squirrels and have a distinctive blonde tail in the summer. It's possible this colouring is typical of British red squirrels, although colours do vary enormously. From dark grey, almost black, with a little red, through a range of chestnuts and browns to a light silvery grey. This greyish colouring can and does cause confusion when identified between red and grey squirrels, but there are distinguishing features.
If you look closely at a grey squirrel's tail, it has three bands of colour in it, red, black and white. Red squirrels never have these colours in their tail. Grey squirrels don't grow the fluffy ear tufts, which are such an appealing characteristic of the reds throughout the winter months. Greys are quite bold and can be seen in parks and gardens throughout much of Britain. They seem to have little fear of humans and will happily accept food from the hand. But reds are generally far more timid, although they do become accustomed to human presence eventually, especially when natural food is short. Helen Butler has asked Mrs Grieve about her squirrels. I went outside the front door where the cockatiel cages are one day. I could hear Paxo shrieking and there was a squirrel in his cage because they'd run out of food outside so he'd gone into the cage with the bird and I thought, oh, what do you do? I thought he might hurt the bird but he didn't. I picked up the cage and brought it indoors and took the top off and the squirrel dashed out and went flying around the house and uh, the bird was okay. You let them in upstairs as well, do you? Yes, they come in the bedroom window and sit and put their shucks all over the bedroom floor. <laughs> you don't mind the mess? <laughs> no. <laughs> Anything's worth it for the squirrels. Yeah. Yes, I used to. They play on the tractor and down the slide. And sat on the rocking horse eating the nuts. Playing the flower pots. What are these? So what antics do they get up to when they come in then? Well, they're not bothered if anyone's here and I was rolling out the pastry and I was rolling and he was chewing the other side of the pastry. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> and did you eat it? No, I cut that bit off. Well, I don't blame you, really. <laughs> Didn't really fancy it after that. <laughs> Some squirrels certainly know how to make themselves at home in human habitation. Oh, so been digging holes in the wet. Oh, disgusting thing. They frighten themselves when they move the lids. That's what's in there. Those are the hazelnuts. Oh, he knows, he knows to move the lids. But just a word of warning. Although they look cute and cuddly, Squirrels are wild animals and can inflict a very nasty bite. These are Corsican pine, very good for red squirrels. It's in here that you'll find red squirrels if you're very quiet you take your binoculars, you get up early in the morning. What you look for is a rustle in the tree. And you listen, you listen for their little chucking sound. You keep very quiet and you might be lucky and see one. You can also look for drays, which is where the squirrels live, high up in the fork of the tree. And the other thing to look for is food leavings. So we'll go and look for some. Ah. And this is all that's left of a cone. After the squirrels strip the scales off and taken the seeds out, Squirrels love hazelnuts too, and they form an important part of their diet in broad-leaved woods.
Other small mammals and birds also feed on hazelnuts, but they have different ways of opening them. This is a hazelnut opened by a red squirrel. It notches the top, inserts a tooth and splits the nut in half. Squirrels know if a nut is dud by the weight and so they will not waste time opening it. The average time for splitting open and eating a hazelnut is a mere 22 seconds. Other small mammals will also eat hazelnuts. A bank bowl takes a neat slice from the top of the nut, leaving tooth marks on the cut edge. Dormice make a neat round hole, leaving patterned tooth marks around the outer edge. Wood mice are messy eaters. They make a hole, leaving lots of scratch marks and tooth marks. In late summer and autumn, squirrels are busy as their natural supply of food is at its peak. This is the time for gathering seeds, such as hazelnuts, beech and sweet chestnut. They eat what they need and bury the rest to be retrieved later when food is short. A keen sense of smell locates the buried hordes but the squirrel who finds the hoard is not necessarily the squirrel that buried it. During the late autumn, the summer coat molts and is replaced with a thick winter coat and long ear tufts. This is when they are at their most handsome. Squirrels who were born in the late summer will be looking for their own territory and are more often seen in urban areas and passing through gardens. This later brood stands a better chance of survival than squirrels born in the spring, as there is more food available. Research has shown that an average of only one in six young squirrels will see their first birthday. The survivors can live for around six years. This is partially because a wood can only provide a certain amount of food and squirrels have to compete with other animals for it. This is sad, but it is nature's way of ensuring that the fittest survive and the balance is maintained. During the short winter days, squirrels are up at first light to look for breakfast and a drink. Wild, water is either obtained from licking dew from leaves or by drinking from puddles. Activity peaks again in the late afternoon as they have a good feed before returning to their dray for the long night. A squirrel's dray is built high up in sheltered trees.
A sensible squirrel builds either in the fork of the tree or against the trunk. Imagine what it must be like at the top of a swaying conifer in a high wind. Drays are built from a dense layer of twigs on the outside, which is then lined with dried grass, moss or shredded bark. Each squirrel builds several of these homes so that they may move when the build-up of fleas becomes unbearable. Generally solitary, squirrels will huddle together to keep warm when the weather is particularly cold. Squirrels do not hibernate and must feed daily, regardless of the weather. To help them through the winter, reds gain 10% of their body weight during the autumn glut. But greys store 20%. This gives grey squirrels another competitive edge over the reds in a year when food is scarce. Mating starts early in the winter, with several males chasing a single female when she comes into season. This lasts for several days until she allows one of the males to mate with her, ensuring that the fittest pass their genes on to the next generation. Gestation is about 40 days, and the female will raise her litter of about three kittens alone. After 12 weeks, the kittens leave the nest and have to fend for themselves. But it's spring by now, and food is short, making it harder for the first brood of young to survive. In the summer, berries, flowers, shoots and seeds provide food, but are not as nutritious as the autumn supply of nuts. Scots pine also provide a very important food source in summer as it comes earlier than other conifers. Whilst the cones are still green, the squirrels can eat the bulk of the cone rather than just the seeds as they will later on when the cones ripen. Adults who are fit enough will mate again and these young will be born in the autumn when the frantic caching of food for the winter will begin again. On the Isle of Wight, there is a good mixture of woodland. Pine plantations. Woods with a variety of tree species. And small, ancient oak woodland. Managed woods are more productive, both for humans and squirrels. But there is a conflict. For red squirrel conservation and other species, a long coppice rotation of 15 years plus is beneficial. But for making coppice products, eight years is best. The red squirrels are, are better in a 12-year cycle coppice rather than the traditional 8-year cycle. As this coppice has been left for around 40 years, it's now gone over and there's hardly any fruit in it at all for the squirrels. So what we're trying to do is get some of the coppice back in order before we actually cut the best of the hazel, which is in the centre of the coppice.
If trees are left too long, they're only fit for firewood. To give the hazel plenty of light, standard trees need to be thinned. Cutting small areas in a checkerboard pattern rather than successively cutting areas adjacent to each other gives the wildlife a better chance of survival. Coppicing is carried out during the autumn and winter months so that nesting birds are not disturbed. After the hazel is cut, it will sprout healthy new shoots which should start producing nuts within five years. Agility and speed, coupled with an amazing sense of balance, has fashioned the red squirrel for life in the trees. They're very light. An adult weighs about 300 grams. Their back feet can turn 180 degrees, so they are as adept at running down trees as running up them. They have pads on the bottom of their feet and long toes with claws to grip with. In common with many places, the island's woods have become fragmented. Hedgerows linking woods together are certainly not as common as they used to be. Again, in common with other parts of Britain, uncut hedgerows are fewer nowadays and the squirrels may be forced to cross open ground in order to reach the next wood. To accommodate modern farming machinery, hedgerows are taken out so that large distances between woods are left without cover, thus decreasing their chances of safely dispersing or even making an attempt to do so. Roads sever many woods, and the squirrels are reported killed on these country highways on the island. A unique solution to the road crossing problem is to provide a rope bridge, especially designed for the squirrels. They're only used where small fragmented populations need help to survive, not where there are larger populations that could survive despite five or six road deaths a year. Permission from the local council and public liability insurance must be obtained before hanging a rope across a public highway. Food hoppers placed either side of the rope encourages the squirrels to visit the trees the rope is attached to. These rope bridges are not only expensive, but need constant attention, whatever the weather. The creatures of it, once they get the right idea, they will use the rope as a crossing point.
Roads are not the only type of human-generated hazard the squirrels face. The spread of development means that former squirrel habitat is now frequented by humans. So instead of just eating their natural food, they supplement their diet by helping themselves to food put out for the birds. We knew there were squirrels round about and we, we hoped we might see the odd one or two but it was incredible. The first morning I woke up here I went and looked out the bedroom window and there was all these squirrels just coming down from the trees and running across the, the grass. I couldn't believe it. There was about, it must have been about eight. And it, was, it was just an amazing sight. The most we've had at one time is about ten and then it's really exciting because there aren't enough feeders to go around so there's tremendous competition to get on a feeder and they spend more time chasing each other to try and get as a feeder than they do actually feeding. But usually we just get the odd one or two. We should give them hazelnuts but they are more expensive and the trouble is they do bury a lot of them and a lot of them come, come up, you know, actually uh, germinate and come out. So I've dug up quite a few germinated. <laughs> Little seedlings out of the out of the garden. <laughs> Too many peanuts can cause thinning of the bone. A mixed diet can be bought, and so can a squirrel-only feeder. But there are always some who like to be different. The perspex lid must generate a lot of warmth and is the ideal place for a young squirrel to sunbathe. Rest time over. Squirrels will readily take up residence in human-made drays. There are drawbacks and solutions to encouraging squirrels into the garden. And there was always dogs running the bait here, and cats, so there was only one way to get over it, and that was to put the ropes up. And I had these ropes, they were down in the, down in the woods, and they'd been down there for several years laid in the grass. So I pulled them up, cleaned them, dried them, put them up and they've done a great job. They really have. Yeah. Because another thing is too, I can lay in bed and watch them come down the rope. Well, I have two posts. They stand about six, six, six or seven foot high, and they're ten foot apart, and they're joined together at the top with a platform. I keep a roof over it, so as when they do come in, when it's raining, they still come and feed in the rain, and um, they do keep under cover as much as they can. And there's two ropes running up to a main rope at the top and they go up and down the ropes, chase one another round and round and very interesting. Water butts must be well covered because squirrels can squeeze into very small gaps. There's a lot of affection and public support for the island's red squirrels.
Strategies have been developed which will have to be strictly followed if the Isle of Wight's red squirrels and other remaining populations in the country are to survive. Careful habitat management with red squirrels in mind and hedgerow reinstatement has been identified as key elements in the fight to save the red squirrel. National and local organisations and volunteer groups implement the strategies and carry out the necessary work. White Squirrel Project is one such group that raises funds to carry out red squirrel work on the island. The general public are encouraged to report sightings of squirrels dead or alive so that fluctuation in numbers and movements in the squirrel population can be monitored. White Squirrel Project volunteers can adopt a route in a woodland and intensively survey the area for squirrel activity over time. Using hair tubes is another way of seeing if squirrels use a wood or hedgerow. This is a hair tube. It's basically a piece of drain pipe with a sticky pad either end. You put food in the middle so that the squirrel goes in to get the food and leaves hair behind on the sticky pad. One's been in here, as you can see by the hairs. We put clean sticky pads back on. And some food in. I've been trying to develop this monitoring equipment for ages because I'm just so against trapping squirrels, especially where it's not necessary. The poor little reds do stress. So I've uh, found some technicians on the Isle of Wight that have actually come up with this type of equipment and we're just trialling it now and I really do hope it works. And I also hope that the other scientists will take it up as well. Right, well we've, we've taken the, the squirrel feeder which you usually use in the uh, in the forest and we've modified it by putting a, an electronic uh, strain gauge load cell onto the base of the feeder with a small platform so that when the squirrel uh, comes to feed it lands on the, on the platform and the load cell then senses the weight of the squirrel and relays the information back to the computer which logs the data and stores it on a hard drive. People with red squirrels in their garden fill in an annual questionnaire. Information is then used to identify where the squirrels most need help. Volunteers receive a newsletter giving the results of their efforts over the year. There are guided woodland walks for squirrel spotting. Tail swishing, by the way, is a sign of annoyance. Talks are also given to raise public awareness of red squirrels and their threat of extinction in this country. The island's rarest inhabitants are getting a glimpse of the international limelight. A French TV production crew has been filming red squirrels near Parkhurst Forest as part of a documentary series highlighting endangered species. The programme will be shown in France and Germany as well as Canada. The camera crew has been following the work of squirrel expert Helen Butler, who runs the White Squirrel Project. The name of the documentary is uh, Squirrel, Squirrel's War. 
and we try to, to show what are the main problems in the UK uh, around the grey and, and the reds. I hope uh, Anne Butler will do, <laughs> yeah. will do our best to, to protect them, but uh, I think she needs, she needs lots of money from the government too. We, we, we are amazing how uh, discover how, how she, is, she, 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 she seems to be alone yeah. working uh, defend it, to defend the, the, the Red Crew also. I think uh, the government uh, had to help her, had to help this kind of uh, very uh, concrete actions on the, on the field to save the red squirrels. They're filming all the squirrel project, white squirrel project work on the island and I think it's really important that the island gets noticed because we're so often left out of national press. And it's really good that they're coming over here and filming today and that will be shown in France and Germany and perhaps Canada which obviously spreads the word and all helps the red squirrel. Helen Butler speaking to us earlier today. Red squirrels are protected under the Wildlife and Countryside Act. Their drays should not be disturbed or destroyed, and it is illegal to take a red squirrel from the wild or harm it in any way. There are exceptions to taking a red squirrel from the wild if it needs help to survive. This is just a holding cage for it being filmed. They may look as if they make appealing pets, but apart from the legal aspect, it's cruel and unnatural to keep them as a pet. As they become older, they become more destructive. Their teeth and claws are very sharp and they will use them on you. This squirrel was four weeks old when it was found on the woodland floor, having dropped from the nest. The mother didn't retrieve it, so the gentleman ate walking his dog, picked it up and brought it in to be hand reared. He's about seven to eight weeks old now and is eating solid food. When it's 12 weeks old, it'll be released back to where it was found. Laws are difficult to implement and there is little protection for the woods themselves. It will take a lot of cooperation from landowners, the general public and the authorities to save our native red squirrels for the future. <laughs>